Welcome to the fourth video of the Foundry's Camera Tracker for After Effects 101 training series. In this video we'll be looking at cleaning up tracks and solves by deleting points and matting up feature regions. We'll also cover how to judge the quality of the track and use the information overlays. Now our shot is looking okay. The solve area was relatively low and the solids and nulls stick in place. What if you're wanting to improve it still more or what if you're not as fortunate as to have a shot which tracks this well? It's worth saying in most cases I wouldn't bother troubleshooting this particular shot since my result is fine for most uses. So it's worth making that judgement call before you get stuck into this because tweaking down the solve error can actually get a little bit of addictive and can be unnecessary if the result is already as good as you need. So Camera Tracker has a whole range of tools and information displays to allow you to figure out what's wrong with your shot and correct it. We'll get to these later on however because rather than turning to them first of all I often find the best way to figure out what could have gone wrong is a bit of eyeballing of the shot, the tracks and the result. So, first of all, let's see how good the solve really is. To do this, I'm going to insert an object into the scene. So, add yourself a solid, and let's make it, say, 2000 by 2000. Turn on your 3D layer, and grab yourself a grid effect, and drop that onto your layer, like so. Okay, and let's make it a little bit smaller in the grid. Okay, now what you need to do is lay it along your actual ground plane, like so. So what we have here is our grid laid along our actual ground plane that we set. Now, if I hit RAM Preview and let it render, you'll see that the grid is sticking nicely to the items within the scene. It looks a bit strange because it essentially passes through the other objects at different depths, but see how the features stick against the underlying plane. Next off, I'm going to eyeball the actual track points themselves. So to do that, let's bring back up our camera tracker layer and bring up the feature points. Now, just for now, I'm going to solo this. Right, I'm looking here for obviously bad points. So the sort of thing where the tracks themselves are sliding or jumping across and around the points they're meant to be tracking. Often troublesome areas occur in the background plane as well where there's no parallax or near the edge of frames where the points may slide along that edge. None of that seems to be happening here however, so that's all good. Now, when I solved before you may have noticed my feature points change colour from orange to this range of green and red. What these colours signify is actually switchable using the display control here, but defaults to showing whether the point in question is solvable in green or classified as an outlier in red. These red points can influence the solve to a certain degree, but generally not by much. They're usually the points which don't fit the internal model of the scene. In this shot, they exist in areas of foreground motion, such as over here, where the actual track movement is due both to the background camera move, but also to the foreground character motion, so it's perfectly right to reject them. If you start seeing big swathes of red tracks on the background structure of the scene, i.e. in areas which should be fine, then it's likely that you have a fundamental track or solve problem, such as bad tracks throwing off the estimate, excessive lens distortion, and so on. I can also get some very useful information about each of the track points by hovering over them. This will show me, in the case of red points, simply the track lifetime, which is the number of frames it runs over, and the track distance, which is the distance in pixels the track point has moved between this frame and the last. In the case of green pixels, solved ones, it will show me those first two again, plus two additional error messages, the per frame and the per track. The first allows you to see when a point has gone momentarily awry, and the second allows you to pick out tracks which are generally not good. In both cases, the higher the number, the less the track point fits with the solve. Now viewing each point in turn can be a bit of a faff, so we can flip our display point down to point quality here, and it'll show solely the solved points, the ones that were previously shown in green, and colour code them according to how big their per track error is. So this allows you to pick out possible bad areas. In this case, you can see how the foreground motion on some of the features in the foreground characters makes for larger solve errors. So let's remove these from the equation by deleting the points in question. There are two main methods for removing points. The first is simply to select them, like so, and delete them. The problem, of course, with that method is that as points drop below a certain quality threshold, they'll get receded later on. So we'd actually have to go through and delete them from later on as well. Hitting solve you can see that we've reduced our overall solve error. One problem here is that you could delete too many points so the solver is no longer able to cope. Generally, as a rule of thumb, if you track it at the default 150 points, it can cope with losing about 50 of them if you've got good tracks. If you're going to delete more than that, up the total number of features in the tracking group, just here, so up this to 300, and try again. 
The other option is to roughly mask out the regions in question. If you're having to do a lot of deletion work, this can really save you some time. So let's check out the process here. First off, we need to make ourselves a new layer, solid, which is the same size as the cop and is white. Okay, let's drag him below our camera tracker effect. And what we're going to do is grab ourselves the pen tool and then run through masking out the regions in question. So leave this selected so your mask gets drawn on there. And start laying down a very rough mask. So hit M to bring up the mask controls and keyframe the mask path. This way you're going to be able to easily uh, lay down amendments which move with the camera. So the next thing to do is go to the extremities of the path that this travels and set up your rough animation point. So essentially dividing and conquering. So go to the last frame and set him like so. And then halfway between, it only has to be rough because essentially we're saying ignore this point. Maybe I'm going a bit too far over here. But that's a pretty good starting point. The woman moving on the stairs also isn't brilliant, so let's remove her too. So that should roughly do us. Again, I'm gonna switch on my mask path keyframing and divide and conquer. And again there, you can see my roto skills are pretty poor. So, you know, as before, it only has to be very roughly right. There we go. And then the final part is our NFTS logo here. Obviously, that's been overlaid on top, and so it's going to do us absolutely no good from the point of view of being able to track if it hooks onto that. Now, for the most important but easily forgotten step, you need to pre-compose this layer. So go in, go to layer, pre-compose, select move all attributes. And now our matte layer is ready. So if you go into your camera tracker and say, take from my matte alpha, matte source, and then that should turn on my matte layer drop down here and allow you to select your just set up pre-comp. Now, this affects your actual track. So we're gonna to need to retrack. So I'm going to toggle on preview features to see that my mat is actually getting observed. And as you can see, I'm getting no features in here, no features in here, and no features around here. So that is excellent. So I'm going to have to track again. I'll be back to you in a second with that retracked. Okay, so we're back. We've solved the result. We get a bit of an improvement over what we had before. Not a massive amount, mainly because the actual track points were pretty good to begin with. This workflow can be very, very powerful when applied to shots with excessive amounts of foreground motion and so forth, which really throw off that tracking solving phase.